G'day viewers, it's Lord Riggs with you once again, the Royal Colonial Boy on the uh, centenary of the Gallipoli landing of 1915 to 2015. I'd just like to read a little um, poem by Banjo Patterson, which is um, very poignant, I think, and I had a, a great-grandfather at Gallipoli uh, whom you, some of you may have read about, called Sergeant Major Charles Robert Lamont, who was the oldest Anzac to die at Gallipoli at Lone Point in the charge for Hill 60. Um, he was a father of eight. He was a palace guard to Queen Victoria in his younger days, a, a Seaforth Highlander. He'd served under General Gordon in the Sudan. He'd uh, served up the Kyber Pass also, and also taught the uh, young uh, troops in Sydney, how to shoot their rifles at what is now called the Anzac Rifle Range at Maroubra, Randwick. And uh, when he died, the widow, Maud, um, was uh, the subject of a rather touching fundraising event uh, orchestrated by the City Tattersalls Club in Sydney uh, with Paddington Council, Ride Council and the Rifle Range they held a dinner dance which somehow raised an enormous amount of money which was sufficient for a three-bedroom brick cottage to be built at Ride in Orchard Street, which still stands today. It's just near a park which was to be named after uh, Charles Robert Lamont, but um, Maud said, you know, Charles wouldn't have wanted that he, because so many young kids that he taught how to shoot rifles died at uh, Gallipoli. He, he wanted everyone to be remembered it, and they called it Anzac Park. They also called the rifle range Anzac uh, Rifle Range. Um, and also, uh, as Charles Robert Lamont worked at the Land Titles Office uh, towards the end of Anzac Parade, what is now Anzac Parade, uh, leading into the city of Sydney, um, that roadway was called Anzac Parade also, which passes the South Sydney Juniors Club. Now, without any further ado, I would just like to read this poem called A Grain of Desert Sand by Banjo Patterson. My little tribute to all the diggers who didn't return uh, from World War I. Doesn't matter if you're Australian, New Zealand, uh, whatever nation you uh, had relatives uh, representing your country, it was a dreadful conflict. And um, also a lot of horses died, Australian horses were killed. There's only one that returned called Sandy. So I'm also going to dedicate this poem by Banjo Patterson to Sandy the horse who returned from World War I, the only war horse from Australia to return. A Grain of Desert Sand by Banjo Patterson as read by the Royal Colonial Boy, Lord Regan. Beneath the blue Egyptian skies with ramp and roller, guide and stay, I saw the pyramids arise and I shall see them pass away. I watched when Alexander passed. I saw Napoleon's flag unfurled, the greatest and perhaps the last of men whose footsteps shook the world. To each his hour of pride and place, Arab and Persian, Greek and Jew, Mohammed trod upon my face, Darius spurned me with his shoe. And yet I am not priest nor king, sultan nor chief in high command. I am that one unchanging thing, a grain of desert sand. That's a dedication to Sandy the horse, the only horse to return from World War I for Australia, and uh, my great-grandfather, Charles Robert Lamont, Sergeant Major, a father of eight children. Uh, my grandmother, Nolene Florence Lamont, was his youngest child, who was 18 months at the time of his passing. He signed up at the age of 46. He hopped on a train going out to Liverpool, Holsworthy Barracks, and insisted that he be enlisted because uh, for one year he couldn't stand seeing the death notices in the Sydney Morning Herald of all the, the young lads that he taught how to fire rifles uh, coming back, or uh, well, not coming back at all, um, falling in battle. So you can read about the actual day he died, August 21, 1915, it's uh, the most famous uh, Gallipoli conflict, which was a dreadful loss. Uh, August 21 and 22, just read what was written by the uh, famous uh, war historians 
uh, including uh, Keith Murdoch, the uh, reporter, and um, and you will see how futile that uh, the, the the senior decisions that were made. Uh, it was just an absolute bloodbath. Uh, he was one of the last officers left standing, and uh, when the order uh, to charge came, he uh, he rallied his troops, his very very tired troops. They'd not had any sleep for 48 hours, and um, they all followed him into battle for what they knew would be certain death. None of them held back, and there was only about six who survived, and they told the story of what actually happened. And uh, the belongings of uh, Sergeant Major Charles Robert Lamont uh, took a while to come back to Australia to Maud, his widow, as the officers' mess in Cairo withheld his belongings, in particular uh, a, a photograph of him, uh, because every officer in the Heliopolis mess wanted an opportunity to get back to the officers' mess to sign his photo, for he was a hero, and the Sydney Morning Herald had a very touching story uh, headed um, a fallen hero and his family um, in the January 1916 Sydney Morning Herald. And so it took a while for his belongings to come back to Australia to maud his widow. And uh, it was a very touching letter that um, you can uh, have a look at on my website, theroyalcolonialboy.com, where um, a very close friend of uh, Sergeant Major Charles Robert Lamont explains to his widow the reasons for the delay in the return of his belongings. Because he was held in such high regard, every officer who knew him wanted to sign this photograph. So thank you for watching. Thank you for listening uh, to this lovely poem by Banjo Patterson. And uh, a bit emotional on this centenary of uh, Gallipoli, 1915 to 2015, lest we forget.